What? It's six o'clock. What's the rush? I have an appointment. An urgent one in half an hour. Do you mind getting dressed? Are you always as charming as this? I have an urgent appointment to keep. Would you mind getting dressed? God's name are you. And who, might I ask, are you? Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were my wife. I can assure you that I am not. And seeing as how you behave, I am not at all sorry. Sir, will you kindly explain yourself? I'm Captain Rory McBride, late of His Majesty's Navy. I don't think we've met. I'm terribly sorry, Captain McBride. Uh, I had been led to believe that my wife may be with you. Uh, I'm Martin Cameron. Landowner, I'm sorry we've met under these circumstances. So am I, damn it. I'm not used to this sort of humiliation. Would you kindly take your leave? Indeed, sir. Uh, uh, madam, uh, I'm most truly sorry. Uh,
for seven generations, the Frasers have been seafarers, Mr. Shortland. The only one to uh, break the tradition has been my brother, uh, Duncan. <laughs> I'm ashamed to confess it, Mr. Shortland, but I've chosen to settle here in the colony. But why be ashamed of that? I think Sydney's a wonderful town, don't you think so, Captain? Uh, I should be very sorry to leave it. The colony has a vigour which I find bracing, but uh, Eliza is missing the mists of her native Scotland and our young son, who is um, staying with my mother. And is this your last voyage? It is, it is. I've sailed many ships over many seas, but the rigours of command are proving too much. Age and ill health are catching up with me. Ill health? Nothing too serious, I hope, Captain. Mm -hmm. Serious enough. Gout, tropical fever, cramps of the stomach, arms and legs. And on occasions, my bunions crippling. But Eliza's been a godsend. These long voyages would have been unbearable if it hadn't been for her tender ministration. Ah, Fraser. Mrs. Fraser, Mrs. Shortland. I wonder if I could have a word with you. Uh, excuse me. Ladies. Uh, what is it, McBride? I need your help. I want to get out of this damned hellhole. Can you take me as a guest on your voyage to London? I'm damned if I will. You squander your money at the gambling tables, you philander among the colony's women folk. <laughs> you have your captain's certificate revoked for throwing a harbour official into the bay. I berth my ships where I like. I won't have some petty official telling me what to do. You're reckless and irresponsible, McBride. I'm damned if I'll have you on any ship of mine. Besides, he came to no harm. Didn't even catch a cold. Now, come on. As a fellow sea captain, you owe it to me. I owe you nothing, McBride. It's all your own fault. You can't expect me to be sorry for you. I served under you for three years as first mate. Three years of faithful service. The worst three years I ever spent at sea. Pig-headed, stubborn, careless. I don't know how you ever became a master. <laughs> oh, enough of this, Fraser. As a fellow sea captain and a friend, will you help me get to London? Please, Mr. Brown. Indeed, sir. Legend has you as a man of action, Captain. But I remember you discussing the work of Wordsworth with admirable sensibility. Ah, yes, Wordsworth. When oft upon my couch I lie. In vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. He is paying you too much attention, Eliza. Brown's noticing, the crew are noticing, and I am noticing. You're imagining it, James. I'm not imagining it. Do you know what the man's like? You're placing your reputation in jeopardy. Nonsense. We have a common interest in poetry. <laughs> poetry. <laughs> the only poetry McBride's ever read of those lurid penny ballads sold in the back streets of Portsmouth. Sit down and eat your meal, James. You're beginning to make me angry. <laughs> to you both. I say, something smells wonderful. What is it? Turnips. Ah, it's a long time since you ate turnips, Fraser. Lamb, I warrant. Or pork. Pork. Ah, see, I was right. Lamb and pork are the only two meats we have on board. So what else could you be but right? James, will you please try to be civil? Otherwise, I shall take my food and eat in my cabin. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you in the slightest. But Fraser, the great circle system, has revolutionized the whole of maritime practice. I can't for the life of me understand why you aren't using it. I've been using the Euclidean system for the last 35 years. I have no intention of changing my habits now. But the great circle method was introduced over seven years ago. It's far more accurate and... And what? And... And... what? 
safe. I've been wondering just how long it would take you to get to that. What? You know damn well what I'm talking about. All right, now you've brought it up, I may as well be honest and say that if you'd been using the Great Circle system, you would never have run your last ship aground. Right. We have been sailing now for only five days. As far as I'm concerned, it's five days too long. As of this moment, you are no longer traveling to London aboard this ship. I am about to tell Brown to change course and steer for the penal colony at Morton Bay, where you can sit and wait for another ship whose captain is ignorant or stupid or both, takes you the rest of the way. But, James... You be quiet or I'll put you off too. What is your name, convict? Uh, Graham, sir. John Graham. Have him flogged, Sergeant, then deliver him to my quarters. What is your name, convict? David Bracefell, sir. Have him flogged, Sergeant, then deliver him to my quarters. I am Captain Fiance. Her Majesty has seen fit to appoint me Commandant of Morton Bay. Within a day you will hate me, within a week you will wish me dead. I do not like my work. I'm gentle by nature, gentle and refined. But I'm also conscientious, and as society expects me to exact its price on you for your sins, I will exact it. Let them witness the flogging, Sergeant. Graceful are to be punished. They will each receive ten lashes from Mr. Fig. bad? The pain, is it bad? Bad. Of course. It's bad. Buck up. What? Buck up. Only two to go. Good. Last one. Good. It's 
my turn. Good. I see you've been here before, Graham. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, years ago. Much bigger now, of course. Really gone ahead. Hmm. David Bracewell, deserted ship Port Jackson. Why did you do that, Bracewell? Your record shows that you've already passed your med certificate and had excellent prospects for an early command. I fell in love uh, with a young girl in Sydney, sir. Oh, and you couldn't bear to leave her? No, sir. How very noble. Bracewell, I'm appointing you my personal orderly. The last prisoner to fill that position proved unsatisfactory. I'm sure we'll have no trouble with you. Sergeant, show convict Braceful to his quarters. Graham, I'm looking for a reliable man to let me know what the prisoners are discussing amongst themselves. I feel it makes me understand them a little better. Do you follow me? Of course, sir. Of course. If you discharge your duties satisfactorily, your sentence will be reduced considerably. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You may find yourself logged down again for no apparent reason, but don't take any offense. It's just a little trick of mine to keep your fellow prisoners from suspecting you. You follow me? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Come in. Captain, there's a brigantine approaching the quay. A brigantine? How intriguing. So you're leaving the ship, Captain? Yes, I've heard so much about Morton Bay, I thought I should stop off and see it, take the next boat through. That is, if you'll accept me as a guest. Of course, of course. But we never know when the next ship's coming, so you may be here for some time. If the hospitality you're showing us this evening is any indication of what I might expect in the future, then a long stay would be no hardship. Well said. Wine, Captain. Thank you. And this is your last voyage, Captain Fraser. That is correct, Captain Tyers. A toast to it. Wine, Graham. Safe voyage. My God, Fraser. Watch the reefs north of here. We had a ship through here four years ago that ran straight into them. <laughs> the captain was an idiot who couldn't read his charts properly. Nevertheless, it pays to be careful. <clears throat> if you don't mind, Captain Fyans, I think I shall retire. Eliza? I think I'll finish my meal, James. I've arranged for you and Mrs. Fraser to have adjoining rooms. The married quarters are taken up by my officers and their wives. That will be fine. Eliza has begun to complain about my snoring, so perhaps it's just as well. No, 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 don't get up. I'm asking God to direct me. Did I say something out of place? Anything that's going, half of it's mine, right? That's the rule. What rule? My rule. What happened to you? Oh, well, what's it look like? It's beaten up. What, by the soldiers? No, by the prisoners. Huh? What did they do that for? Oh, how well, should I know? He was bashed because he's Fyne's new spy. Fyne's spy? <laughs> that's absolute and utter... Yash! Every time Fyne's... It's a new batch of prisoners in. He gets somebody to spy for him and somebody to warm his bed for him. <laughs> and you don't look much like Fyne's bed boy. <laughs> bed boy? <laughs>
Um, <laughs> is, um, is Captain Fines a, a bit funny? Oh, he's a regular scream. <laughs> My God, what a faux pas, as the French would say. <laughs> Your husband was the captain who hit the reef. <laughs> what a faux pas, my friend. I don't blame you for getting off the ship. My dear lady, I do hope you get to London safely. <laughs> you don't find it all that amusing, Captain. My husband and some of the crew nearly lost their lives in that shipwreck. You're right. You're right, my remarks were in very poor taste. Graham, wine, a toast. To Mrs. Fraser, if not the first, then certainly the most beautiful lady ever to grace the shores of Norton Bay. No, no. Not enough. The most beautiful lady to grace the shores of this colony. Oh, I'll drink to that. Come on, McBride, why so sad? The most beautiful woman to grace the shores of this colony. And tomorrow she sails. She sails. Rory, you're embarrassing me. I think we all appreciate you have a fine carrot there, Bracewell. Would you mind putting it on a plate? Uh, the sergeant will show you to your quarters. If you want anything, don't hesitate to call the guard. Good night, McBride. Good night. Good night, dear lady. Good night, Captain. <laughs> the moon and the stars. Nature compensates for man's bestiality. Sergeant, we'll be with you shortly. Eliza, do you realize we may never meet again? Yes, I do. Are you sad? Yes, Rory, I am. Very, very sad. and one of them, no doubt, is to tamper with the affections of women. But in God's name, Eliza, you're not one of them. Rory, the sergeant's waiting. Oh, damn the sergeant. In all these weeks, you've not so much as kissed. On, Thank you, Seem to get it off, sir. <laughs> My fault, Bracewell. 
I played a little trick on you. I flexed my toes. Try that. <laughs> Not a very amusing trick, I'm afraid, but one is driven to any kind of diversion in this hellhole. Yes. Uh, will there be anything else, sir? Yes, there will, Braceful. I like my bed warmed. I can't stand cold sheets. Oh, uh, well, uh, how do I do that, sir? How? You get into the bed, of course. How do you think? In it. In it. Good God, man, don't you understand English? Take your clothes off and get into bed and call me when it's warm. Uh, I'd rather not, sir. My God! I'm not going to have trouble with you, too, am I? Do you know what happened to my last orderly? He had the skin flayed off his back. I'm not a naturally vindictive man, Braceful. Don't force me to be unpleasant. Now, for the last time, take off your clothes and get in that bed and tell me when it's warm. You know, Braceful, you remind me terribly much of myself at your age. Spirit. Yes, I had spirit. In love. Yes, I was in love. Ah, oh, it's a cruel world, Braceful. It's a cruel world, as you'll soon find out. How's the bed? Warm? Yes, sir. Can I get out now? Stay where you are, Braceful, dear boy. I want to check you're not telling me a lie. Braceful! Come on, my little chicken. Don't be shy. Uh, speaking of chickens, the cook says there's some lovely cold lamb in the kitchen. If you care for something with your cocoa. Tired! My order is made off. Scar the compound. He must be here somewhere. Yes, sir.
This is wrong. It shouldn't be like this. Never in a million years dreamt that it could be like this. Never. You make all your conquests feel like I do. You're not nearly as broad across the shoulders as I imagined. Do you pat them? Huh? Rory? Please, Mr. President, please, don't hang me. Please. But even if you do escape from the compound, there's nothing but bush for hundreds of miles. I'll have a better chance out there than I will in here. Oh, my God. I have made love to a man I don't even know. And that man is in fear of his life. May the Lord save us from further misfortune. I don't know how long I've waited for this moment. Mm. Me too. It's just that I'm so very, very tired. Uh, it may take years, but by God, we'll meet again. By God, we will. This night will give me strength. I'm so tired. Then let my passion awake you.
Rory. What's the matter, Rory? <sighs> Too much drink, that's what's the matter. Just hug each other. Hug each other? My... My dear Eliza, I'm the greatest lover in the colony. Oh, damn that drink. Damn, damn. What is going on out there? I don't know. Perhaps the soldiers patrol like this every night. Not damn keen, that's all I can say. Woke me up. They are noisy. Yes. <clears throat> Eliza, this is going to be hard for me to say, but I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I've, I've been behaving very badly towards you lately. But now that the cause has been removed, I, I think things will be different. What cause, James? Well, that damned, insolent, conceited, know-it-all, swaggering, loud-mouthed Bob McBride. You must admit he's an utterly tiresome retroliser. You must admit that. Well, he does have his weaknesses. Uh, Eliza. Things will be normal again. I feel they're normal already. Oh, Eliza, it's been too long since we've been free. No, James. Not tonight. I'm so very tired. What do you mean you can't find him? He can't have escaped. We've looked everywhere, sir. My God, what have I been given in place of soldiers, barrow boys? I want every soldier out of bed and thrown into the search. Oh, by God, I'll have those stripes off your arm if you don't catch him by morning. Sir! Right! Benefit! Pass it along! Get over here on the double! But Eliza, it's, it's not often, often I feel like this, but when I do, you reject me. I know, James, dear, but I'm very tired, so we've got a hectic day. Eliza! Damn, didn't consider it ever. I'll fix him. I'll fix that old fool one day. I must say, Eliza, you didn't exactly stand up for me. Oh, I had to say something, Rory. Really. Well, at least he's gone. Oh, I love it. Rory, go, 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 go. It must go. It's too dangerous. It must go. It must go. But, Eliza, this is our last night together. It certainly is. And it's ending right now. What am I going to do about you? Soldier! Psst. Who goes there? Anyone there? Yes, I couldn't sleep, so I decided to take a walk. But there's such a commotion. Bad night for a walk, missus. Convicts escaped. Oh, my goodness, really? Could I see inside your sentry box? I've always wanted to see inside a sentry box. It's 
beautiful. Convict who's escaped. Is he dangerous? Not to one of His Majesty's army, ma'am. I must confess I feel very safe standing next to you, soldier. What is your name? Bruce, ma'am. Bruce? Bruce McIver. Oh, what a charming name. What a charming face. Do you mind me speaking so frankly? No, ma'am. Not at all. Uh, Bruce. Do you know what I would like more than anything else in the world? Mum? I would like you to kiss me. Now? Well, I'm on duty. Yes. I've wanted it from the moment I first saw you. Didn't you notice me looking at you? Actually, I, I, I did. Kiss me, Bruce. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, just one thing, soldier. Don't mention this to anyone. My husband is a violent and insanely jealous man. You, Sergeant. Has anyone been this way? No, sir. No one. There's, there's, there's been no one come past this way, sir. Absolutely no one. None at all. Captain, Mrs. Fraser, I'm obliged to wish you a prosperous future. I hope we meet again. Thank you, Captain. Perhaps we will. Mm. What is the young orderly, Captain? Bracewell, will you send your old men after him? Perhaps, Mrs. Fraser, but my feeling is he'll be back as soon as the pangs of hunger start to bite. There's nothing out there but hell swamps of heat. Pestilence, reptiles, and murderous savages. It's a cursed land we're in. What else can you expect of a country that hangs upside down on the nether end of creation? Even the Dutch wouldn't take it. Mm. But what will happen to him if he returns, Captain? He'll be made sorry for his misdeeds, Mrs. Fraser. Very sorry. Thank you for your um, hospitality, Captain Pat. Not at all. Better luck with the reef this time. Yes, well, I'm an experienced sailor of fans. I learn by my mistakes. <laughs>
about 150 miles north of Morton Bay, Captain. Look, I say we put ashore. We're near out of fresh water. The boat's leaking like a sieve and we're being burned by the bloody sun. There are cannibals on that shore, Dodge. Cannibals. You think I'm mad? You think I'm going to put ashore amongst cannibals? The natives are not cannibals, sir. I know. You want us beheaded and roasted on a spit, Dodge? Is that what you want? You don't put ashore soon, Captain. You'll have cannibals here in your boat. That's no way to speak to you, Captain Yulden. I'm telling you, Brown. A few more days like this, we'll be drawing lots. Drop that! What do you mean? Drawing lots? Don't listen to them, Mrs. Fraser. Well, what do you mean? Draw lots? <laughs> it's an old seafaring custom among shipwrecked sailors with no food, ma'am. They draw lots. In what losers? Gets eight. Stop that, you and stop it! You think we're demonic heathens? Stop it! With all due respect, Captain, we're making little headway against this breeze. It might be wise to put ashore till the wind changes. We can look for water, cork the hull. We're starting to ship a lot of water, Captain. Hello. We'll put ashore at the nearest freshwater stream. No one is to leave the beach, do you understand? No one. Brown will take charge of the musket. Then we will put to sea again when the wind changes to the south. Three days now for the wind to change, Captain. For all we know, it could blow up the coast for a year. We are if not we... traveling overland, Dodge. I've told you that twice already. We have a gun, sir. We can stick close to the shore, shoot game. The boat is leaking like a sieve. We are not going overland. There are savages in that jungle, savages. And we have one musket. Well, we haven't seen any savages, sir. And I'm getting bloody tired of sitting here on this beach. We're staying here till the wind changes, Hilden. Now, thank you not to speak to your captain in that insolent manner. Well, damn you. I'm tired of sitting here eating ship's rations when we could be on the way to Morton Bay. Where are these damn savages he keeps talking about? Where are they? Bloodshed, Bob. We'll hang if there's bloodshed. We'll hang anyway. Not if there's no one but us to tell what happened. There'll be no killing. Once we get the gun, they can come with us if they want to. I won't object to Mrs. Fraser coming Shut with us. Shut up, Doyle. There'll be no killing.
James, uh, uh, I need a rest. Every man jack of them. The mutinous cars. Cannibals. I knew it. I knew it, Eliza. Oh, my God. Keep calm, James. It's quite all right. Keep calm. Oh, oh, Eliza. Eliza, if, if they should kill me, James, I would like James, you to... Don't be ridiculous. They only want your coat.
It's quite all right, James. He only wants my dress. Stand back, you damn heathen. My wife is not to be subjected to those sort of indignities. <laughs> What a bloody country is this? There are no animals anywhere. Yeah. 
Bender. Yeah. Dare you, sir. I'm a pretty sea captain. I'm damned if I'll be ordered about by a savage. Slaves. That's all we are, Eliza, slaves. Working all day and separated from each other at night time. Still, we're alive. We have food. Food. Mm. You call this food? We must try and eat, James. We're going to need all the strength we've got.
Take it, Bobby. Take it. took our chances, Bobby. You're a dead man. Mundy's trying to marry me. Marry you? That's savage. They have, a lot. The trouble is, nobody realized that you and Mrs. Fraser were married. What did they think I was? Her brother? Her father. I'm not waiting around. 
to have my throat cut in my sleep by the likes of you, Jimmy Yeldon. And how did you escape the massacre, Dodge? I was slightly ahead of the rest of the party when the blacks attacked, sir. Ah, uh, Badger, we'll have to teach those damn savages a lesson one day. Is this your gun, Dodge? Yes, sir. Yes. And Captain Fraser, Brown, the rest of the crew, they were all armed when the massacre occurred? Yes, sir. They were, sir. They were simply overwhelmed by sheer numbers, sir. You're a liar, Dodge. This is Captain Fraser's personal weapon. I've seen it in his cabin. Are you sure of that, McBride? It has a horsehead motif carved in the stock. I think we'll have the truth, Mr. Dodge. Oh, by heaven! I'll have it beaten out of you word by word. But they may very well still be alive, the Frasers and Brown. Let me lead an expedition out there. It'll bring fame and honor to Morton Bay if they're rescued. It would bring more fame and honor to their rescuer. Perhaps, but I'm not interested in personal glory. Nor I. But duty demands that I lead this expedition myself. Come in. What's going on? Lieutenant Alter's discovered his wife in Captain McBride's room, sir. He's quite upset. McBride, when are we going to get rid of that man? You are a guest here, sir. How dare you? If you feel some wrong has been done, you stop shouting about it and ask for satisfaction. I'll be only too willing to oblige. Orderly, fetch me my dueling pistols. We'll have this out right here and now. No! <laughs> well, you might shriek, my good lady. I'm one of the most feared duelists in the colony. But if there's one thing I can't stand, it's sniveling husbands. <laughs> Twelve paces apart, fire at the drop of this handkerchief. Can he shoot? Uh, well, he's the best shot in the regiment, sir. Damn it, Otter! I can't have your blood on my hands. The list is too long already. Apologize and we'll call the whole thing off. Pride prevents you, eh? Oh, well, damn it, I like a man with pride. Graham will collect the pistols and we'll go back to bed. My pride! Still determined, eh? Very well. Put those pistols away! I insist that you let events take their course, sir. It's a matter of honor. Any further trouble from you, McBride, and I'll clap you in our arms until a ship arrives. Otter! Back to your quarters immediately.
Graceful. Graceful. You've got to get us out of here. Graceful, listen to me. You must take Eliza and I back to Morton Bay. We can't stand this life much longer. Even if the crew get back to Morton Bay, they'll never tell Fyans that we're alive. Graceful, you are our only hope. I'm not going any nearer Morton Bay than this, Captain. If Fyans' men caught me, they'd flog me until I die. We'll... We'll speak for you, lad. If, if you do this for us, we'll speak for you. You may even get a pardon. I feel I've learned enough from the natives to get us there. I'll take you both to within sight of Morton Bay. Thank you, David. I thought you probably would. Is, is that why you came? are getting colder. These heights are warm, aren't they? wouldn't take my advice, would you? Oh, no. I could have sailed you up in a rigged whaleboat and avoided all this. Get those boots up out of the mud, you idiot. You've ruined one pair already. Oh, no. You had to go over land. I know why, too. I know damn well why. You thought that if I sailed you up, it might look as if I were the leader of the expedition. Well, we're paying for it now, aren't we? We've got a useless effort. Never <laughs> scrub and muck. Paying for it now. Sorry, sirs. Something came over me. We've done our duty. We've made our point. For God's sake, let's at least have the sense to turn back before these damn leeches drain our last drop of blood. The captain and Eliza are dead. There can be no doubt. I'm sorry that someone got to say.
jump. Oh, my God. Spare me, sir. I've nothing against black people. Nothing. John, it's me, Davy Bracefell. Bracefell? Why, Christ, Davy, you scared the wits out of me. Quiet, John. What's happened to you? Never mind about that. Just listen. Tell Fiance that he can hunt for as long as he likes and he won't find me. But if he's willing to grant me a pardon, I can supply him with something he'd be pleased to have. We're not out here chasing you, Davy. We're looking for Captain Fraser and Eliza. Their ship was wrecked and... Yeah. Yes, I know that. And I know where they are. They're alive? Yeah, they're alive. They're living with the blacks, same as me. Tell Fires that if he'll guarantee me a pardon and swear to it in front of three other men, then I'll fetch Fraser and Eliza for him. You'll bring them here? Yeah. I can have them here by tomorrow. I've learned the language of the blacks, how to hunt, travel. So tell Fiance what I've told you and come back here with this decision before dark. Oh, John. Make sure you come by yourself. Because if he tries to trap me, I'll be off into the bush and I won't be back again. All right, Davy lad. I'll do that. I'll do that. Why didn't you tell me about this before? There's nothing in your records about an escape. Well, thankfully, that was crossed from my record when I returned. How long were you away? Six months, sir. How'd you stay alive? Well, I lived with the blacks, sir. I learned their language and how to hunt and travel. With the savages? That's remarkable. And what's this got to do with our return to Modern Bay? Well, I thought perhaps it might be worthwhile staying here for a day or so. Uh, while I went out and tried to make contact with the blacks to find out if they've heard or seen anything. Worthwhile? Of course it would be worthwhile. And I'll be damn pleased, Graham, if you find out anything. Damn pleased. Thank you, sir. That's worth more to me than a pardon. I'll tell you what, Graham. If you locate the Frasers, I'll give you a pardon. A pardon? My God. Locate the Frasers and you shall have your freedom. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you remember the convict David Bracefell, sir? Yes, I do. Perhaps I can find out something of him. If you locate Bracefell as well as the Frasers, you can have ten guineas to go with your freedom, Graham. And that's a promise. I'll do my very best, sir. Davy, me lad, your troubles are over. If you can bring Fraser and Eliza back here, you'll get your freedom on the spot. Did he swear to it in front of the others? He did. He did. Why are you carrying that load on your back? Oh, I'm coming with you. Fines thought I should bring some food and clothes for the Frasers. All right. If we hurry, we should get to them before daybreak. It's all right, sir. Huh? Huh? It's all right. It's me, Bracebell. <laughs> the rest of the rescue party had given up. 
But I convinced them to allow me to strike into the bush alone. I came upon Bracewell at the edge of the natives' camp. Oh, thank God for your fortitude, Graham. Ah, uh, well, you've been an ill-used man, sir. I'm glad to help you. Ill-used? What do you mean, ill-used? Ah, oh, nothing, sir. Nothing. David, after we get back to Sydney, would you still want me? But Eliza... In two days' time, you'll be free. You'll be a pardoned man. I shouldn't have spoken, sir. I'm sorry. Tell me, Graham, what are you referring to? I'd rather not say, sir. The man's degenerate. What man? Openly and loudly boasting of a liaison with your wife. Eliza, leaving your husband would be enough to ruin you, but taking up with a pardoned convict. I can't live with him any longer, David. We could go to New Zealand, no one would know. Do you still want me? Yes, damn it, I do. We'll go to New Zealand. McBride, openly boasting. He's with a rescue party, drunk most of the time, and telling disgusting. God, I thought you meant Bracewell. Bracewell? McBride, openly boasting. They'll pay. Both of them. If only I had a pistol. Hands above your head, Bracewell. You're coming down with us. James, David's to be pardoned. Pardoned? Huh. Move on ahead, you blackguard, or I'll shoot you on the spot. Graham! Sergeant, manacle that man. Captain Fines, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of what, dear lady? David Bracewell was offered a pardon. Why has he been taken away? Pardon? I offered him no pardon, damn the man. It's John Graham here who has the pardon. John Graham? But it was Bracewell who saved us. Bracewell? What do you mean, my good lady? Take no notice of her, Captain. She's infatuated with the wretch. They took advantage of my helplessness to conduct an open and illicit affair out there in the wilderness. An affair with a convict? Eliza, what's happened to your standards? And what of yours, sir? Is that enough you to seduce the wife of a man who offers to help you? No, you spread it around in drunken detail. Captain Fiance, you promised David Bracewell a pardon. I you may be an adulterer, sir, but I'm not a gossip. You are mistaken, Mr. statement Fraser. immediately. Please try to calm down. I'll retract nothing. You're a damn liar, an adulterer, and a base braggart. Retract that statement or I'll have satisfaction. You'll have satisfaction in any case. Sir. What's going on here? Very well, then. Pistols at 20 paces? No, sir, I'll have none of that. No dueling under my command. We're not under your command, Captain. This is something that must be settled once and for all. Sunrise! Sunrise.
walls are on fire. Run, run. My information is that they're both reasonable shots, sir. I can't risk Fraser being killed. God, I'll get a knighthood if I get him back to Morton Bay. There's only one way, Graham. We must dispatch McBride before morning. It must look accidental. But how? Sir, the convict brace for his escape. Shall I wake the troop for pursuit? You will indeed, Sergeant. And I... Captain. Just a minute, Sergeant. Don't do anything for a minute. Just step outside. What's your point, Graham? Brace fells a small fish, sir. Perhaps we can use his disappearance to advantage. You're absolutely right. Any woman who fraternizes with the convicts is not worth risking our lives over. I couldn't agree more, but we'll have to go through with it. Pride demands it. Well, yes, of course. Of course. Mind you, there's a chance we'll both miss. Mm. I think there's every chance we'll both miss. In fact, we'll make sure we both miss. <laughs> By yours! <laughs> Done. <laughs> I knew we'd come to terms. Uh, another drink. <laughs> Oh, my God, sir. Aboriginals, we're being overrun. Jimmy. They found the woman who went down the stolen castle. The captain's wife? Where? Are you staying long in Sydney, Eliza? No, I'm desperate. I can't wait to see John, my son. He'll be seven on Thursday. Where's he living? Parramatta. My brother and sister-in-law. He came out from England when they had news of the wreck. to be personal, Eliza, but are you short of uh, finance? Yes, Rory, I am. Do 
John. As James's brother, I am legally entrusted with the boy's care, but if I am not sure that you can provide for him adequately, then I cannot let you have him. We're only thinking of the welfare of the boy, Eliza. Believe me, I know how you must feel, but the boy's interests must be paramount. When this unfortunate attention that you're receiving at the hands of the press has abated, then perhaps you will marry again and establish yourself as secure. Until that time, the boy remains with us. And if I were not to marry again, what sum of money would you consider necessary for me to adequately provide for my boy? Money? <laughs> Where would you have access to money, Eliza? The most incredible. The most celebrated shipwreck of our time. I could do nothing. As day after day, I watched the savages consume the crew, one after another. Did they boil them first, miss? Yes, I'm afraid so. First, my poor husband, Captain Fraser. Did they scream when they was put in the water, miss? Terribly. Questions at the end, please. Let Mrs. Fraser continue. Then Brown. Then the crew. I thought at first that I was to be last. But no. An even worse fate was in store for me. The tribe began preparing for some sort of ceremony, the purpose of which I did not at first comprehend, until, with a sickening jolt, I realized that I was to be forcibly married to the cannibal chief. After a ceremony lasting three days and three nights, I was born to the chieftain's tent, there to await him. Through a chink in the wall, I saw him striding towards me, huge, black, powerful, and menacing. And in his eyes, I saw a fire that would brook no resistance. Was he naked, miss? Questions at the end, please. Although there was nothing but the vast reaches of the forest around me, I took my courage in my hands and fled. Alas, ere I had gone in fifty paces, he saw me and gave chase. Nearer and nearer he drew. And just as I had begun to give up all hope of rescue, out from the reaches of the forest stepped... Captain Rory McBride! What arrant nonsense, man! This is disgraceful. You are imposing on the public in a most indefensible manner. Who are you, sir? Rory McBride was nothing but a dissolute rake without the courage of a field mouse. The only cannibalism during the whole incident was perpetrated by members of the crew on each other. How dare you impose on the public in this way? How dare you? Who are you, sir? By what right do you dispute with Mrs. Fraser the events which took place on Great Sandy Island last year? I have lived in that area. You have? Were you present when those events took place? Oh, my God. What is your name, sir? My name is Green. Alexander Green. I first heard of the story when I was shipwrecked amongst the aboriginals of Morton Bay. Shipwrecked? Morton Bay? Yes. I spent some weeks in that area before I was rescued by an American whaling ship. Liar! I know who you are. You're the convicted felon, David Bracewell. You have the wrong man, I assure you. My name is Green. Eliza. Eliza, why are you telling this ridiculous story?
He's no more a sea captain than I'm the Lord Chancellor. He's an escaped convict from Morton Bay. Constable, arrest this man, Green or Bracefellow, whatever he calls himself, and we shall test the truth of these allegations at the next sitting of the court. Thank you, Your Worship. The scoundrel has gained some sort of influence over poor Captain Fraser's widow. I felt I should bring his deception to the court's attention. I'm glad you did, Captain McBride. I've been trying to trace you for some time. Martin Cameron, landowner and magistrate. I trust you remember me. Of course. Good. But then you'll appreciate we have a small matter of honor to settle. I'll send my seconds around this afternoon that you may choose place and weapons. I trust you'll be able to make yourself available by dawn tomorrow morning. Unfurl the topsail and catch that westerly, Mr. Roberts. Set course for Auckland. Uh, Mitchell, escort Mrs. Fraser and her son to the forward cabin, will you? Oh, uh, your brother has moved in there, sir. My brother? Well, yes, sir. He came on board an hour ago. I'd better see him, then. Come on, Jack. Alexander, I've decided to accompany you after all. I hope you don't mind another passenger. Would you mind leaving us, Mitchell? I'd like to talk to my brother. What's this about, McBride? I've come to apologize. I've been in love myself. Rory, why are you here? To wish you Godspeed and happiness. <laughs> I uh, do have a little proposition, as a matter of fact, to put to you. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, Eliza, but the story of your rescue is the sensation of London. Oh. The newspapers are full of it. If we set up our sideshow in Hyde Park, we could all make a fortune. You can't be <laughs> serious. I've never been more serious in my whole life. <laughs> now, I've worked out an itinerary. Uh, just two months in London, and... Uh, then, a short tour of the north, 
I absolutely promise you that the whole engagement will not last longer than three months. <laughs> What's more, I guess it's a be in the Thank you.